Well, Father's Day is around the corner, and it always brings back great memories to me of my dad. I wish I'd understood the fifth commandment, found in Exodus chapter 20. It's verse 12. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. One of my greatest regrets is not uh, truly honoring laying weight of praise on my dad while he was still alive. In fact, he died without me sharing a tribute with him. I wish I'd done that. It's one of my greatest regrets. But I did go ahead and craft a tribute that uh, I include in my book, The Forgotten Commandment. Writing that uh, tribute to my dad resulted in me writing one to my mom while she was alive. Their tributes hang side by side in my office as a great reminder of God's gifts to my life through my parents. I ended up finding that the whole concept of writing a tribute was so powerful that I wrote a book called The Forgotten Commandment. And my dad's tribute is in this book. And uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to share it with you. It's entitled, A Tribute to Hook Rainey. Dad's home, I used to yell as the back door slammed shut. Our small two-story frame house would shudder when the back door slammed shut. The sound of that slamming door was especially loud when one man came through its threshold, my dad. I can recall as a little boy playing in my room and hearing that door send a series of quakes that rippled through the walls and rattled the windows of that small house. It was my dad's signature and signal that a day of work was completed and a man was now home. I would yell, Dad's home! And then dash through the, the hall and the kitchen to greet him with a well-deserved hug. I would then follow him around like a little puppy to, wa to the washroom where he washed his calloused, grimy hands like a real man. Everything about him signaled he was a real man. From the gritty, lava soap to the Vitalis hair tonic and even Old Spice aftershave. My dad was a unique blend of no-nonsense and discipline with a subtle sense of humor. He was quiet, private. He was a man of few words who didn't seem to need many words to get the job done. His countenance commanded respect. In fact, there were several boys who had a personality and discipline transformation when they graduated from the third grade Sunday school class to my dad's fourth grade class. Miraculously, discipline problems dried up along with dozens of paper spit wads. In the 12 months that followed, paper airplanes were grounded and eight boys sat straight up in their chairs, dutifully listening. To the lesson. My dad knew how to keep attention to the kids. Hook Rainey, they used to call him. The tall lefty got his nickname from his curveball. A pitch so crooked it mystified batters. I got the feeling he was on his way to becoming a legend in his day. He even pitched a game against the Hall of Famer, Dizzy Dean. Funny thing, but he could never remember the score of that memorable game. <laughs> I used to convene, I used to accuse him of convenient amnesia. I recall the easy chair that used to carry the shape of his exhausted form. It was as he was reading the evening paper that I usually planned my assault on him. I'm certain I nearly pestered him to death on more than one occasion while asking my weary dad to play catch with me in the front yard. And play catch we did. Night after night, he taught me how to throw a curveball, a slider, and even a knuckleball. He used to claim that 
You could count the stitches on that knuckleball when he threw his patented knuckler and the entire yard was filled with our laughter, a father and a son. I always loved to hear him laugh. Somehow it made me feel secure. When I was three or so, he went to Colorado hunting and bagged a fierce teddy bear. He staged the action on film and brought the fierce beast back to me. My kids now play with that worn out 35-year-old black and white bear. I watched him look after the needs of his mother. He used to visit his mom three or four times a week. He modeled what it looks like to honor one's parents. From him, I learned about integrity, trust, and how to be a man of my word. He taught me the importance of perseverance, for he stuck with his job for nearly 45 years years. He leaves me with an indelible imprint of sinking roots down deep and living with the same people with whom he did business. When I was in high school, I won the magazine sales contest my senior year because I introduced myself as Hook Rainey's son. That was good enough for an instant sale for nearly 100% of my customers. My dad had helped so many people in the community that being his son gave me immeasurable credibility. For a while, I actually thought it was that I was a good salesman, but he had a good name. His reputation was untarnished in the community. His funeral was attended by nearly a third of the small Southwest Missouri community called Ozark. He lived and did all of his work within five miles of where he was born. One man was even able to say at his funeral, in all my years, I never heard a negative word about Hook Rainey. <laughs> he gave me imperishable memories instead of just giving me things. Memories of Little League Baseball, he was my coach. Fishing trips where he netted the fish that I caught and they were so small they went through the holes in the net. And basketball scores from all my games. He clipped out every one. He never missed a game and he made me a scrapbook. There are memories of watching him through the frosted window of our old pickup truck delivering hams at Christmas. Memories of the feel of his whiskers against my cheek as a boy. When he wrestled with me on the floor of the living room. And memories of him whispering to me as an extroverted, impetuous boy, don't bother people while they work. Finally, there are memories of snuggling close to him as we watched the game of the week announced by Dizzy Dean. As an impressionable young boy, my radar caught more of his life than he ever knew. He was the model and hero I needed during some perilous teenage years. And you know what? He still is. He taught me the importance of hard work and completing a task. I learned about lasting commitment from him. I never feared my parents would get a divorce. My dad was absolutely committed to my mom. As a result, I felt secure and protected. But most importantly, he taught me about character. He did what was right even when no one was looking. I never heard him talk about cheating on taxes. He paid them and he didn't grumble. His integrity, was impeccable. I never heard him lie. Never. And his eyes always demanded the same truth in return from me. The mental snapshot of his character still fuels and energizes my life today. Dad's home. I can still hear that door slam and the house quake. This morning as I write this, Dad truly is home in heaven. I look forward to seeing him again someday and saying thanks for the legacy he gave me, but mostly for being my dad. But right now, he'll have to pardon me, but I miss him. All of us are given a pair of parents, 
a mom and a dad. This Father's Day, why don't you give your dad something that will be a lasting statement of your love and appreciation for him. Don't give him a dust buster or some electronic gadget. Give him a tribute and then watch where he hangs it. May God give you the courage to do what you're supposed to.